they want me gone nah. But I ain't going away yeah. They told me I was wrong I swear to God, in man. My ass. This is Steve White Oh, oh, what's going on, man? All right, guys, let's jump straight into this. We got uh, Steve Wojcic of the NFL Network. Um, I got about three or four questions for him. First of all, thanks for joining us, man. Yeah, absolutely, no problem. Uh, question number one is, like everyone's talking right now, like the NFL lockout appears to be close this, to ending this week or next week, but what, what is happening that is making people think that? Because it seems like that's just talk, but nothing's really changing. Yeah. Oh, I mean, you can't say there's nothing's really changed. I think it's a situation where you see both sides are spending a lot of time negotiating. Uh, you've got major players involved, and uh, they, they've clearly made headway. I mean, the, the finish line is, is within view. Um, they've just got to come over a few more obstacles. But they've they spent the time, done things legally, and negotiating to get a little bit closer to the lockout. So, no, it's I can't sit here and say that it's imminent, but all signs are indicating uh, that it could be done, uh, you know, within the next few weeks. All right. In that case, um, you're going to have to slide free agency in there somewhere. What are they going to do with training camp? Are they going to move it back, and how long is it going to be, things like that? All, all depends on when the deal is done. If they get it done in the next week or two, training camps can pretty much start on time. Um you know, free agency is going to be uh, an interesting situation because it may start, you know, within anywhere from 48 hours to a week after a deal is struck. And then, you know, your training camp start right away, you know, for the most part. So you've got to incorporate, you know, get players to move there, incorporate right into your system, you know, physical. So it's going to be a rush. I mean, when you hear this talk about it, it's going to be a frenzy right when a deal is done. It's, it's going to be a very harried and hurried experience, but it'll also be very exciting. Yeah, and are, are there going to be some players missing from training camps, uh, draft picks, and guys that just haven't signed deals yet? Well, yeah. I mean, if they're not signed, they won't they won't be there. They won't participate. But I mean, that's what this whole rookie wage scale is about. If it's if it kind of goes back to the old system where there's a lot of negotiating and things like that, there's a chance that some of those high draft picks won't be in there on time, and that would really be damaging since they didn't have any mini camps or OTAs or off season workouts. But there is a wage scale where the negotiation element is is taken out of it somewhat, where it's not so much haggling or you're waiting for certain players to sign a deal before you you get another guy signed. Um, That will expedite the process. Trust me, these teams are waiting to find out what the salary cap is going to be, what the structure is going to be, and they're going to strike high. They, They don't want these rookies to miss any more time. But, you know, again, if it's a situation where there could be some complicated negotiations, uh, you know, then there might be some delayed signings. But what you're going to see is you're going to see the undrafted rookies, uh, like Mark Herzlick, the uh, undrafted linebacker from Boston College. I think that come off the board right away. Within a couple hours, that process will be done throughout the league. Then you're going to see a lot of veteran free agents, and I'm the awesome with Cullen Jenkins, guys like that get signed, and then the rookies. So it's going to be a, a multi-tiered, multi-faceted, and uh, incredibly fast-moving process. Talking to Steve Weiss of the NFL Network. Um, speaking of uh, a few more things with the lockout, are the players going to, are the teams going to get the right of first refusal to match the contracts if uh, the players get signed by another team? Yeah, I'm not in the negotiating room, so I, I really don't know. Okay, all right. Um, what teams are going to be helped out most by having this short off season? What are the teams that have, you know, stability at the quarterback? They've got a, a stable veteran core of players and, uh, you know, stability on the coaching staff. So you're looking at, you know, the Packers, the Colts, the Steelers, the Patriots, uh, the Falcons, you know, teams like that where there hasn't been a lot of turnover, they don't need a lot of free agent help, and they're not counting on rookies to necessarily step in and have a huge impact. Uh, final question, where do you see Plaxico Burris ending up? Tough call. I mean, he's he's not necessarily a priority pick for anybody. I mean, teams right now, uh, you know, he's 34, so he hasn't played in a while, so I don't think he's someone they're going to dive right into and get. Um, you know, he'll, he'll be a situational receiver. So, I mean, teams like St. Louis, you know, Miami, there could there, there be a plethora of places, but he's not going to be a free agent who necessarily comes off the board real quick. So, Wide open, it could really be anywhere, and I think it's uh, you know real speculative just to kind of guess 
and then throw out there because any team could take him right now. I think he fits kind of a priority or fits a, a mold for just about any team out there. All right, Steve Walsh of the NFL Network, th- thanks for coming on, man. You got it. <laughs>